Hello and welcome back. What's that? You thought I was talking to you? No way. I was talking to this guy. Grocky. He's pretty chill. He killed someone once, but hey, it was only once. But yes, hello to you as well. It is time for me to spend some alone time. Alone time with this game. For today, we are gonna spend 500 years in World Box. Now you might be thinking, hey, didn't you do a thousand years one time? 500 years isn't that long. Let me tell you something. We just fast forwarded like half of the thing last time because it was too much time to fit in a video. And secondly, we've got these puppies installed. Industrial Warfare and Industrial Economics, or I'm sorry, Industria 1 Warfare. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Industrial Warfare, but you know what? I didn't make the mod. But a uh, shout out to the uh, mod maker of this mod. I'll put the links to these in the description. What do these mods do, you may ask? Well, Modern Mod, as you've seen before, adds modern buildings. So the buildings don't stop at being like a nice wooden house, they keep going. Eventually you get cranes and skyscrapers and stuff. All modern looking, one might say. What about the other mods, you may ask? Well, Industrial Warfare adds guns. That's right, I said it. I'll say it again for you people that didn't hear me. Guns. Cannons. Rifles, pistols, you name it. And the industrial economics mod, which pairs with it, adds like a way for people to make guns and gather gun parts and cloth for different things and so on and so forth. Well, I don't really know everything about it. We'll see. Also, we have these buttons here where we can give out propaganda to make people join the army, as well as uh, give out irresistible recruit posters to soldiers or civilians so that they'll work in the factories. So we can basically make kids work in the factories and everyone else join the war, whether they want to or not. Let's jump into it. Let's do all four, okay? Because we got rebellions on today. Let's put the orcs down here. Let's put the elves on the island. Let's put the dwarves over here. Put the humans up here. Let's meet the villages here and crank up the speed just a little bit because we got a lot of time to cover and I want to make sure we both see all of it and also skip the boring stuff. You know, I want to make sure that we get to know these people, but we don't got to see everything that they do. This guy here, Fischel. Yeah, sure he likes sushi. Sure he's a normal guy. He's 21. You know, I don't know if four intelligence is significant. I don't know what my intelligence stat would be in real life. I never really thought about it in that way, but uh, hopefully four is good. Ancient sun. In glory we believe. Very cool. Spears of a coir with vigilance and light. Very cool. Fabico of sun. Another sun. And then tall or gag. Yurgig? Let's say Yurgig. Yeah. These aren't real words. We can pronounce them wrong if we want, you know? I'm also paranoid now. It's mostly funny than actually a problem, but there was a video where one of these auto-generated names was like a inappropriate word in a different language, and I've always wondered if that was going to happen eventually, because how could it not? Just by chance, it's going to happen eventually. So it's funny that it finally happened, and so now I'm just like, is Fabico a bad word in a different language? Is Ergig a bad word? Is a coir? Son of a, a coir, you piece of fabico. <laughs> Man, if they ain't, then they should be. Get out of my face, you ergig. <laughs> if any of these actually are, I'm in big trouble, but uh, we're, we're gambling. Let's go ahead and change the dwarves color, because they're a little too close, you know? Let's make them like, uh, yeah, let's make them like, I don't know, white with brown? That looks good. Okay, so the year's only 30. The world is young, and so are the natives. Fubico, I think, is my favorite to say. It could be Fubico, but I think Fubico is cooler. Where's the king? Mr. Fub himself. Actually, I just realized there's something wrong with doing it that way. Um, okay, let's see. What are you up to? Fabico chopping trees down. There's one thing I'll give a shout out to in this game is that the kings, they behave like regular people, you know, to the point that I'm not even sure that they have a role. Like they still walk around, they still build stuff, they still chop trees down, they'll go gather berries or whatever, they'll go to war. But uh, what makes them special as a king? You know, what, what's the kingly duties they gotta take care of? Like, what do you do that everyone else doesn't do? Cause it looks to me like you're out here chopping trees down, you know? And I respect that, I'm not knocking it. I think that, hey, if you're gonna be the king, you gotta know what your subjects are going through so you can make better judgments on how to advance your kingdom or whatever. But it's definitely funny that the king of Tall Urgig is out here gathering like plants and dropping them off. I mean, heck, he's working harder than like some of the people out here. Like, what are you doing, dude? Favorite food is bread? You just out here thinking about bread? I think so. Oh, you're shy, you're gonna run away now? Okay, well, we already saw. Taking a break. A break from what? You don't even have a job. Okay, populations are all pretty 
pretty even except for the elves um, but that might be okay because they have a very secure location and then there looks like they're moving into savannah which will actually be good for them because the rhinos won't attack them because of their passive perk so you know they might uh, they might be able to kind of scoot by a little bit they're gonna be able to safely expand in this little island here as long as no one attacks them anytime soon so i'm not too worried about it. I feel like they'll be okay. Over here, we got the dwarves. They're doing pretty well. They're spreading out in a nice kind of even chunk here. They got the mountains back here. They got the mountains up here. They're looking good. Good size army. Fubico is up here. They got a good chunk of land. They're right in the middle though. Oh, there's war between humans and orcs. Also, I don't know if I said this already, but the rebellions are on. It's the reason why we included the orcs is because they suffer when there's rebellions because they can never work together. So they might do really well in the beginning here, but I'm thinking that once the rebellions kick in, they're going to start falling apart. Hopefully. They might just steamroll and win, but I feel like it was time for us to include them because it's been a long time. Oh no, someone killed Fubico. Did he die of old age? It's only year 63. What happened? Oh no, dwarves and elves are at war. Yeah, we got the dwarves up here trying to blow up the uh, elves, which is pretty understandable. Whenever we put the elves in here, we don't expect them to get very far, unfortunately. I like them too. I like the elves. I think they got cool stuff. I like their tree-themed buildings and just their overall style, you know? I mean, look at them. They got cool... Uh, they got cool little outfits or something. And actually, you know what? They're doing okay. Maybe they'll be okay. It looks like they're not going to be okay. Um, it looks like they did move out here, which is cool. Good for them. They also have... No, they don't actually. They don't have anything over here. I was going to say, but they don't. It looks like the humans and orcs made peace at some point. So it looks like they stopped fighting. So that's probably good for the humans. Because I think that the orcs probably could have eliminated them. Although, look at this comeback. 180? They just passed up the orcs. So, who knows? Dwarves over here at 240, though, and I think they're going to eliminate the elves. Which is fine. You know, it's a little bit sad, but it's fine. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. This town was, in fact, plenty big enough for the two of them. Wow, look at this crazy thing here. The orcs are kind of stuck. They're slowing down big time, and the humans are just shooting upwards. I would have thought the orcs were just going to annihilate them, but then I don't know who made peace with who, but it was a mistake if it was the orcs. That was their chance, although they are strong. Maybe they'll be okay. Let's check some of the loyalties here. They got a couple villages kind of lowering down. Uh, how about you guys? Oh, there's a potential rebellion in the human kingdom. Potential rebellion. They're not there yet, but they might get there eventually. In the dwarf kingdom, and it looks like the elf kingdom um, is rebelling by having gotten eliminated in the first 90 years of the world. Oh, we got uh, rebellion. Opelig of Moon. Okay, that's bad news actually, <laughs> because uh, the humans need to hold together if they want to beat the orcs. They can't be falling apart right now. Take it back, boys. Okay, they're actually taking it back. They're going to be okay. Oh no. Both kingdoms just declared war on the humans. They're getting attacked from both sides. The humans were busy with their own rebellion and they just thought this was a good time to attack. That's crazy. The dwarves are coming in like crazy. The orcs are over here like crazy. Man, what if we get a dwarf versus orc showdown? I don't know if we've really had that. It's usually humans versus orcs at the end. That'd be kind of cool. It's only year a hundred though. I want to see people get guns. You guys got to stay alive until there's guns. Yeah, the orcs and the dwarves are teaming up big time and just walking right through the humans. Leave them alone, please. Dang, that's gonna be it, I think. Oh wait, no, they're fine. They're gonna be fine. <laughs> they got a Pogazi over here. Don't worry, there's a 15 year old kid that's gonna save the village. Oh, he didn't save the village. Brutal. Okay, well the humans are gone just like that. Year's only 110. Now the nice thing about rebellions is that potentially, even if one of these kingdoms wipes the other one out, doesn't mean it's over, you know? Because then that kingdom can rebel on itself and sometimes a rebellion kingdom takes over the main one and it's always just kind of a treat to watch it can be a little bit chaotic but it's kind of a treat so let's go ahead and turn on sonic speed a little bit here until something funky happens because we got a lot of time to cover and i want to see how this goes the orcs are down here at 390 dwarves at 600 we got a big rebellion in the back here von ur just split the kingdom almost in half okay slow it down this is getting spicy quick okay <laughs> let's pause it okay Urgig and Akoyer are the originals, right? We got the Og, the Diz Easy Clan, Axe of Og Oz. So the orcs had three rebellions like in rapid succession. This is why rebellions balances them. And then the dwarves are out here getting really split up by this rebellion. If they if they lose this region, that's a big hit to them. 
Yep, okay, so they're pretty much broken in half right now. But fortunately for them, you know, the uh, orcs are a little bit busy right now, so maybe they'll be okay, but they are still being kind of little jerks over here. Look at that. They absolutely need to take this back. They had a good thing going on, and they almost just lost it. Okay, come on, take it. Now, I always feel like I have to root against the rebellions, unless the rebellion has a cool name. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, 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 you guys got to take over the main one. But Van Ur, mm, sorry, the Og, there's potential here. I mostly like that they're green. I think green is cool. Axe of Og Oz, looks like they're going to take them back. That would be very good for them. But unfortunately, we kind of have to root against the orcs a little bit, you know? Okay, yeah, the orcs are taking out the Og, and it looks like the dwarves are actually going to take out the Axe of Og Oz. Oh, well, you think it's funny me pronouncing all these ridiculous names? Well, keep laughing, bud, because I'm going to do it again next week. And I'm going to keep doing it in every video, because this game is all about randomly generated nonsensical names. Like, look at this. Ver Appeal, Gil Gior, Astilla. That's actually not bad. Gan Bahir. Ver Aporimo, Arum, Deg Acero. This is wacky. Okay, looks like the rebellions are gone. We got 640 versus 9, about 900. I really want to see some of those modern buildings get built. Like, I really want to see someone reach the sixth tier of buildings and then onwards, because that means they're probably getting close to uh, guns, you know? You know, we got to give the people what they want, the people being you, and honestly, the people being me as well. I want to see guns. You guys better not eliminate each other until there's guns involved. Oh, another big rebellion. Oh, no way. Okay, that was close. Strong Diz. Strong Ds, more like. <laughs> Dang. Oh, they took the center region. Rocky, they're a gore. Take it back. They're just going to keep keeping themselves busy with the uh, rebellions while they try to develop guns. The people want to see guns. Tell them how you want to see guns. Oh, another one over here. Whoa, no way. As warriors. They just split the whole kingdom in half. And they're taking it over. Can they? Will they? They did. My next question was going to be, should they? But uh, we don't have time to ask ourselves that one. The orcs are falling apart. The dwarves are at thousand population. And they are quickly dealing with the rebellions. Unlike the orcs who are having these crazy rebellions. We're only at the year 200, bro. You guys got to get... Get your act together, man. And maybe consider getting guns. Okay, I feel like some of these buildings are like tier 4 and tier 5, so we're gonna start seeing tier 6, which is where the mod buildings begin. Oh, what the... As warriors is hanging out on this island. These brothers right in the middle here. The rebellions are always so big. Dang, these guys are holding their ground in the middle. Oh, huge rebellion. Ancient Tabir, 460. That's pretty much half of the kingdom. Oh, man. It's not just a problem for the orcs anymore. The dwarves are falling apart. Although they seem to recapture their rebellion zones pretty dang quick. Oh my goodness. Was that four simultaneous rebellions? Rocky, Ikor, Hur Mountains, um, Ancient Bear, Adore, <laughs> Etil Miners. We've gotten that name before, I think, actually. Oh my goodness, man. It's all falling apart. Spears of Akoyer are, like, falling apart. And I think this Ancient Tabir is going to be the big one now. But on the other side, the tall Urgig people, the original orc kingdom, is kind of doing fine. Let's throw some sonic speed on. Let's give this some time to consolidate here. We're only just barely halfway through a 500 years, so we got we got a lot of time to cover still. And I really want to see our first modern building. I feel like it's got to be soon. We got some people declaring peace. Oh, wait a second. There's a cannon. We got ourselves a cannon. That can only mean one thing, right? Someone. Someone out there's gotta have a gun, right? Dwarves still all have bows. The orcs still all have, like, wood weapons. Another cannon over here, though. Interesting. Well, either way, we are entering into the industrial age. If people got cannons now, this is about to get wild. Okay, let's look at this here. I think that the, uh... Yeah, the original dwarf kingdom is gone. The spears, or whatever they were gone. We got Nag Gog of Death. Green Nak Nad. <laughs> these are getting just increasingly wackier. I don't know if I can read all these, dude. Um, Tall Urgig is about to go. Oh no, rest in peace, goodbye. Okay, so all the original kingdoms are gone. This rebellion, which was huge when it started, has now grown into the biggest kingdom by quite a large margin. Looks like they're trying to take this island up here, and we'll see if they succeed. I really want to see some guns. Have I said that yet? I think I'd like to see some guns. I definitely think the technology is 
is almost there so hopefully soon and kind of it's going to be the right amount of time because we don't want them to have guns too soon but it's right around the time where i'd like them to get guns so we can do like the last hundred years with guns now i probably should clarify i'm not a huge like fan of guns or something but the fact is this game is usually just sticks and hammers and bows what i'm excited about is guns in this game Okay, that's what's exciting here. Okay, hold up though. I'm starting to realize something. My eyes are looking for the modern mod pieces that I'm familiar with, but this is new, isn't it? What the heck is this? And I honestly, I don't really recognize this building. Is this new? There's some new buildings mixed in here. Cool. Yeah, I was waiting for those flat ones from the modern mod, like those really flat kind of bad looking ones that we're so used to. Um, but we were getting some sneaky new ones already mixed in here. Cool. Look at, what the heck is this? What is this, some sort of modern building with like a garden on top of it? Like a park on top of an office building? Okay, cool. All right, we're 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 entering the industrial age. Uh, it is now year 411. Let's go ahead and slow it down a bit here. Let's see how our friends are doing. Who's biggest right now? Oh man, ancient uh, whatever got eliminated at some point. We got Nril Pix here at 1200 and Rocky Abor at... Uh, 1200 as well and then the orcs are down to one kingdom and that's the green knack nad bro and we also got these dune baum guys out here it's like they got this island and also this random little village here groovy dude it's weird seeing them fighting around like these big modern structures i don't oh wait a second what is this okay this this is a new weapon, right? It's some sort of like modern spear. I didn't read anything about there being a new spear. Napoleon Pike. Okay, we're getting there. Very beginning of the industrial age. We got modern spears. We got pikes. If all my years of playing Age of Empires 3 taught me anything, it's that pikes are only good up until the point that guns get invented and then it's all over. We got this cannon out here blasting people. Look at it. Look at it go. You better not be blasting your own people, dude. There's no bad guys here. Oh, wait. Hold up, though. We got some. We got a live one. Empathetic Annihilator. I don't think that that makes sense. Uh, or maybe it does. You just feel really bad every time you blast someone. Okay, it's happening. The guns have entered the scene. They're still rare, but they're out there. We're at year 430. Things are about to heat up. Oh, we got some like new, we got like a cutlass here, like a saber. No way. Also, it looks like they're holding it by the blade, but you know what? I'm no sword master. Maybe that's the right way to hold a sword. Spoilers, it's not. Also, okay, here we go. Another gun. Some sort of, like, hand cannon. Nice. Okay, where's this cannon cannon at? It's blasting people right here. What kind of range those things got? I don't even see it. Nice. Okay. At year 500, we're going to turn rebellions off and let them kind of consolidate. Although, I think that this Rocky Abar team is going to win. Although, let's look at their villages, shall we? Now, look at that. They're all in the green. They're all positive. Barely. But they're all positive. The orcs have kind of held on. About 1,000 population. Good for them. Looks like they're getting some modern structures as well. That's cool. I like the looks of these ones. They're still not perfect, but I think they look pretty good. This looks like a rocket ship and like a book, like resting against it. I'm not sure what that building is supposed to be, but I don't think I understand. This also looks like a rocket ship. Are they about to go to space? Is that the strategy here? Oh no, we're losing the war. Let's go to space. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's supposed to be, but that's definitely what it looks like to me. Okay, this structure is absurd and I kind of love it. It's so over the top and excessive. What the heck? This one too. What is this? Five stories and like a little garden on top? I want to live there, dude. That's crazy cool. Are these exclusive to the dwarves? Because it seems kind of random that their thing would be like these little park garden giant office building things. You think that'd be like a modern elf thing? Okay, we're getting here. Let's see some guns in action. Look at this guy out here. Out here just straight up blasted. Look at this kill count. He is... Oh, Oh, he's getting caught up too. He's on fire. He's dead. Okay, on to the next gun person. <laughs> 130 damage, holy smokes. Blast them, dude. That literally is like an instant kill on most people. Look at that, every time he shoots, he kills. This guy's commando, this is Rambo out here. Are you just using a shovel, my guy? Is that a shovel? You're looking pretty stupid next to the guy with the gun. Okay, what year are we looking at here? Four. 48. If both kingdoms have guns, 
It's gonna get interesting. Oh, we got a rebellion over here. What the heck is going on with these buildings? Are these just supposed to be houses? They're so big. These must just be houses. It looks cool, but they're so big compared to the houses. Okay, whatever. I guess that's modern living, am I right? That's crazy. What is the orc equivalent? Is there an orc equivalent? Is that better not be these these uh, rocket ship houses? This isn't a house, is it? Oh man, it is. They live in cages, dude. They go from like totally classic orc house with like horns on it and bones and then it turns into a rocket ship then it turns into a more extreme looking rocket ship and then it's like i don't know a rocket launch station and then it's just a dome cage with a book and then it's just a cage this is like where you'd keep your pet rat and then bada bing that's like where you keep a pet bird i don't know what the orcs are up to man but it doesn't make any sense at least these buildings kind of make sense <laughs> they're still kind of ridiculous but they kind of look cool at least nril picks is back here on their island and the orcs are here just exploding them with guns although i think these guys have guns too no they don't okay gun people versus non-gun people let's watch he just he's just sniping them bro holy smokes look at this giant person back here give them a gun the fire rate seems oh actually it seems not bad 14 kills oh this guy down here's got a gun oh they killed him all right you guys are doing great the cutlasses the guns the the pikes it all looks really cool i wish this giant person had a gun though a giant gun also what are you guys doing just standing there literally growing old right there it's kind of romantic okay oh no way the main dwarf kingdom just got a humongous rebellion and now they're busy with that they gotta hold on for 38 more years until we turn off rebellions but maybe this kingdom will uh, be enough to slow them down or stop them look at this army wow dude that's crazy okay looks like uh Nuril picks is getting destroyed by the gun army of orcs and it's just mostly being defended by kids here which is always kind of feels bad to watch you know when they just come in here and annihilate all the kids <laughs> to take over the uh kingdom it's just kind of it's just i don't know it's a little bit uh you know it's a little bit not very nice all right let's crank up the speed a little bit here the final stretch see if any progress gets made either direction here it's hard to say they're keeping it pretty even about 1600 1700 each and it's kind of giving the orcs over here time to i don't know fight back and build up a little bit it seemed like the green kingdom here was going to be the obvious winner but now i don't really know man they're still in the lead but i don't really know if it's going to be that simple it looks like a large portion of them have guns now the wars are looking particularly modern let's follow this gun guy here oh he did <laughs> How do they have so much health, too? That's right, there's different armor and stuff in this mod, too. Plus 600 health for the exquisite head hit. Steel helmet. So much new stuff in this mod, it's crazy. The orcs are out here, they got their guns ready to go. It's such a big army, too. Look how much of this is destroyed. This whole region is scorched. Oh, whoa, but that kingdom is number one right now by a lot. We got eight more years and we turn off rebellions and then, uh, oh, can they take the island? No way, dude. Our boys. I mean, we weren't that connected to them anyway but still whenever someone has the lead for so long and then a rebellion wipes them out it always feels like man what did you do wrong did you forget to feed your citizens because they sure turned on you really quick the orcs are out here doing some crazy stuff with how much aggression the orcs have and how much damage they have just like based on like their base stats giving them guns makes them so scary the green dwarf kingdom's down to 600 and the tan one is 2100 they just turn that around quickly two more years and we hit 500 and we're going to turn rebellions off and that will give the orcs a good chance to make something happen although i feel like the orcs and the dwarves have been having about even amount of rebellions so i don't know if that really will help them that much but let's go ahead and turn that off and let's see uh let's see where this goes sonic speed is on now we can declare this tan kingdom as the like honorary winner because with rebellions off it sort of buffs the orcs a little bit so if the orcs turn this around and win you know you could say oh that they just won because you turn rebellions off and i and i see that so let's say that rocky ghoul core is the honorary winner and then if they don't win the full thing you know it that does still count for something. They were the winners of the rebellion world. Although this green kingdom is kind of holding on. It's definitely slowing down the rocky ghoul people. But let's see what happens. And there we go. Works are gone. So wait a second. They're not gone at all. They're right here. But they're, I mean, they're gone. But they're not gone. Okay, well, the works, 
Maybe they'll win it. Look at this. They got an army right here. This guy's got 1,400 health. Maybe he's going to turn this thing around. And not because I don't believe in him, but let's just pretend that they aren't there and just talk about this for a minute. This was a kingdom of chads. They showed up as a rebellion, wiped out their original kingdom, and then moved on and wiped out the kingdom that was at war with that kingdom as well. And, you know, maybe they missed a few, but who cares? I think that they're winners. We're looking at year 680, so it took them 180 years to get to this point. Um, but, uh, yeah, GG's them. Maybe we should do this again with, like, a smaller map with, like, just two kingdoms and no rebellions because it was kind of hard to watch the impact that the guns had on everyone because uh, there was just too many wars going on. But look at them. They look pretty pleased about their guns. But, yeah, no, I, I dig it. We're gonna actually just end it here with these guys chilling we can just uh imagine that this group of four soldiers went on to cause havoc you know red dawn style for the uh dwarves but uh ggs all around thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time bye